an ordinance relating to the business license tax, amending the definitions of agricultural product and farmer, and amending section 5.30.020 of the Seattle Municipal Code in connection therewith. And we have the presenters to the table, please. Do you have any presenters? <laughs> I'm Kent Meyer. I'm with the Seattle City Attorney's Office, and Pete Holmes is, is planning on attending, and I think he's back for a few minutes. Uh, well, I think we don't have our folks for the library bond, so we're going to have to proceed. Let's do your introduction again over the microphone so the audience can hear. Yes. My name is Kent Meyer. I'm an assistant city attorney with the uh, City of Seattle. Okay. And I'm prepared to summarize what this bill, I, I can, um, Pete isn't here in his absence. Here comes uh, Mr. Holmes right now. I see him through the window. You almost had the, the floor to yourself. City Attorney to the rescue. Here we are. Introduction, please. Pete Holmes, City Attorney. And I've already introduced myself, Kent Meyer, Assistant right. City Attorney. So I was just asking um, Kent uh, who we who would want to begin discussing this. Well, um, you know, I'll just give a, a quick overview, if that's okay, sure, uh, Councilmember Licata. The uh, the bill is to eliminate an exception to an exception to an exemption. Um, and uh, it's to, uh, you know, under our B&O tax, we have uh, an exception for agricultural uh, industries. Mm -hmm. uh, marijuana uh, facilities would have, I'll catch my breath here in a minute, would uh, escape this, this modest B&O tax if we uh, leave in place the exception. And so for your consideration is uh, the ordinance that would allow that uh, to be repealed. So essentially, this allows the city to uh, obtain tax revenue in the form of B&O charges to those activities that are legally engaged in the distribution, production, and growing. Of, uh, well, actually, just be growing. It's just, the, just the production. Just the growing. Right. Okay. Would it be production as well? I mean, um, well, right now under our B&O tax, we tax we we would tax production. That's at a a similar rate. The exemption that uh, this ordinance addresses is called the farmer's exemption. So it, that that's aimed at traditional farming activities, growing, growing okay, products growing that are sold in Seattle. So okay. this removes that exemption for that activity, and it allows that our existing B and O tax, which is at a 0.215 percent rate, less than a quarter of a percent rate, to be imposed on um, the sale of marijuana in the city, and it's. Because of the way I-502 structures it, it's going to apply to wholesale sales. All right. Now, we had distributed this um, proposal to some of the various stakeholders in the city, and uh, for the most part, it seemed that there was support for it. There was one response back that suggested that medical marijuana be uh, exempted, and the state is considering something to that effect. No, you've looked over some of the materials. Is there anything in particular you want to add to that? Well, there have been some just collections uh, that uh, the Department of uh, Finance and Administrative Services has had on uh, sales relating to uh, medical marijuana. There were a total of 145 uh, tax forms filled in in 2012, the last year with full reporting. Uh, Fifty of those paid the tax. Uh, the reason being that there's an exemption for up to $100,000, so uh, about two-thirds of the, the the people who reported did not pay the tax, and the total revenue was estimated around 116000 Those numbers aren't exact because there's no code for marijuana businesses specifically, but that's the best estimate that FAS was able to get uh, for 2013. Uh, Forms were due on January 31st. They don't have complete information yet. All right. Well, you know, the, the one 
issue about whether you want to make an, uh, a distinction for medical uh, versus recreational is that it's not clear at all today what's going to happen in this session of the legislature. Uh, there's the bigger question, I think, of local revenue sharing uh, that is uh, something that we have to look to the legislature to provide. This is an opportunity. It's, a, it's an, an existing revenue source already authorized by the state that uh, you know we can uh, we can step into, and I think, um, given the modest amount of tax, certainly in comparison to the, the the rest of the taxing structure, if someone's continuing a medical marijuana facility and is not operating under 502, they already have a huge tax advantage. If they are, if somehow they are permitted to go forward um, without a without the you know, the excise tax structure that's in place for 502, then that, that facility is already enjoying a pretty big uh, break in taxes compared to what recreational would be doing. I just would offer that. Um, I think that uh, the, the I, you know, the paperwork and the administrative burden in trying to differentiate might be something that the city doesn't need to, uh, to do by going ahead and just repealing the exemption for any marijuana facility. The um, um, state legislature is currently considering some changes to allow for exemption for medical marijuana. I think uh, Representative Rivlin has introduced something. I'm not sure how long, how far it's gotten. Um, that would address this legislation as well, wouldn't it? It it could it, well it wouldn't address the B and O tax per se, but you know as far as whether Sales. or not there would be a state license for what is predominantly a medical facility, mm -hmm. uh, th those are uh, that proposals embracing that are among the three or four bills that are in uh, in the legislature right now. Well, comments from other council members. So I just wanted to clarify right right now, Kent, as you said, um, we exempt farmers from the B and O tax. Correct. And this ordinance is saying our definition of farmer does not apply to marijuana growing and production. That's exactly right. So therefore, right. they would have to pay the B&O tax on their gross receipts. That's right. Okay. Seems, seems reasonable. I, any other comments? I, one last comment. Uh, again, my crystal ball is no better than anyone's at the table here about where things are headed, but with the uh, Attorney General's opinion that localities can ex uh, ban 502 facilities, uh, it is possible that Seattle may have more production facilities than uh, we originally anticipated. The 21 limit that the Liquor Control Board has set is just for retail stores, right. and we don't have a limit on uh, the number of processing and, and uh, production facilities. So we may end up, as a, as a consequence of the Attorney General's ruling, with more of these facilities than before. And uh, it's, it seems like it is a reasonable area that the city should look to for revenues to help address the additional burden the city may be uh, 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 taking on as a result of the Attorney General's opinion. Well, that's a good point. Now, also, I'm not necessarily in favor of doing exemptions unless it's directly related to uh, health maintenance or medical, but we're not at that point yet, I think, until the state decides what the status is for medical marijuana. Um, so I, I, I'm fine with this. This is our first briefing on it, so the expectation is that we bring it back to the committee and vote on it then. Um, any further comments? All right. Thank, Thank you. you very much for the briefing. Thank you. Thanks for letting me catch Thank my you. breath. And good, 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 good to have uh, good. Uh, it's a good thing you're in shape. <laughs> oh, that that begs another question. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you.